Toyota is the best resale value brand for 2024, according to Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com. So choose Toyota and enjoy the confidence that your vehicle will retain its value. And check out the legendary redesigned Land Cruiser, spacious Grand Highlander, or adventure-ready RAV4. Find out more at buyatoyota.com. Vehicles projected resale value is specific to the 2024 model year. For more information, visit Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com. Kelly Blue Book is a registered trademark of Kelly Blue Book Co. Inc. Toyota, let's go places. Homes.com knows having the right agent can make or break your home search. That's why they provide home shoppers with an agent directory that gives you a detailed look at each agent's experience, like the number of closed sales in a specific neighborhood, average price range, and more. It lets you easily connect with all the agents in the area you're searching so you can find the right agent with the right experience and ultimately the right home for you. Homes.com. We've done your homework. You know that feeling when you walk into your home, take a deep breath, and feel new? Well, that's what it's like to use Clorox Sentiva. Because Clorox Sentiva smells like coconut, cleans like Clorox, and feels like energy. It'll elevate any cleaning routine to not just clean, but also make every room smell like a tropical coconut getaway. Discover how Clorox Sentiva's powerful clean and refreshing scents can transform your space. Get yours in coconut or other fabulous scents at a nearby retail store. I didn't want to do the nine to five. I was not going to take the normal path. I'm sitting in a hammock in, well, paradise. If your idea of paradise is kind of the classic one, lush rainforest, green hills, clear streams, too many chattering birds and monkeys to count. At night, the woods swarm with headlight beetles, which are like giant fireflies. It feels like Pandora. I wanted to go see some tropical forests, and I wanted to go catch snakes and crocodiles and the stuff that I did. In the hammock beside me is Jacob Marlin, and this is his baby, the Belize Foundation for Research and Environmental Education, or Be Free, a 1,000-acre preserve in the Maya Mountains, dotted with thatch huts and visiting biologists who come here from all over the world to study what a healthy rainforest is like. Be Free is right at the juncture of several other huge preserves including the Bladen Nature Reserve, the crown jewel of Belize wilderness areas, which is why Jacob bought it 30 years ago and has lived here as its conservator ever since. It connects all the other preserves into one massive wild forest. Jacob's a laid-back dude in his 50s. He has long hair parted in the middle. Kind of reminds me of the actor Crispin Glover. He came here in 1993 as the reptile guy on a team of biologists that were exploring the Bladen which is famously remote and inaccessible. As he hiked his way through it, Jacob felt like he'd entered a time capsule. We went to places that no human had been since ancient Maya. We came upon clay statues of monkey and jaguar gods. We saw burial grounds of Maya stuff. Clearly no one had been there. For the next two weeks, Jacob found himself exploring a world straight out of a fantasy novel. You're like, oh my God, I think I see a cave opening. And then you go in there and then you walk for nine hours. <laughs> and then you look down 150 feet below you, there's a massive river flowing. And then you look over there and there's like Mayan pottery and skeletons and shit scattered over there. But <laughs> then you swim out the cave and you go over here and then you find 250 spider monkeys swinging down below. You're like, what the fuck's up? And then there's a jaguar over there. That's what our 15-day expedition was like. How many times do you get lost? <laughs> it's lost the whole time. I mean, we were all lost. It was madness. But it was the best kind of madness, the kind he wanted to devote his life to. When I came out, I was completely blown away. And I was like, oh my God, this place is incredible. I wonder if I could get involved in, in this place. In fact, the Bladen was so full of wonders that he overlooked one of them entirely. I remember passing wild cacao trees. And someone was like, oh, it's a wild cacao. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. who cares? To Jacob, cacao was agriculture, and he was a nature guy. So he devoted his life to preserving the big nature of the Bladen and forgot all about the cacao. But little did he know that that particular cacao, hiding in plain sight in the Maya Mountains, would end up being the key to protecting the very rainforest he devoted his life to, and possibly a whole lot more. He was living with ancient ghosts, 
that had been waiting centuries to speak their piece. From Kaleidoscope and iHeart Podcasts, this is Obsessions, Wild Chocolate. I'm Rowan Jacobson. Chapter five, Ghost Chocolate. The forests of Belize contain more than a thousand species of trees, astounding diversity. To Jacob, cacao was just one of those thousand. But as he explored his preserve, it began catching his eye more and more. Some of the pods are one color or another color or another color. And some are yellow when they're ripe. Some are orange when they're orange is purple when they're ripe. Some are green when they're ripe. Some are multicolored when they're ripe. It's different shapes a little bit, different sizes. The trees had a lot of diversity in appearance, but they had one very important thing in common. Sometimes you'd walk up to a tree, it's in in 90% shade, it's in the middle of the forest, or 100% shade, and it's covered in pods. To the average person, that might not sound like a big deal, but to people who think about sustainable food production, that's the holy grail. Think about every crop humans have cultivated. Corn, rice, kale, whatever. They all need full sun. Same for the modern strains of cacao we've used for a century. And that means that growing food often means wiping out forests. And that's been especially true for cacao in West Africa. It's destroying national parks. It's eradicating species. It's uh, like, fuck, cacao's horrible. But not this cacao. This stuff's weird. It is. It's weird. The trees are different. These are not hardy robust plants. These are rainforest plants. They want, you know, don't don't put them in the sun. Don't give them any sun. <laughs> These trees do best in 60 to 85% shade. <laughs> and if you give them 30% or less, they die. Well, good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> give, give them I know. It's amazing. I mean, that- amazing because a tree that could flourish and produce fruit in the deep shade of the jungle that requires rainforest over its head. Well, that could turn farming into a way to grow new rainforest and pay for it. So, Jacob got super curious about these cacao trees. And the first step was to find out how many he had. So in 2012, he hired Elmer Salam, a local Mayan guy, to map them. So I did an expedition for, I think, like two, two to three years, find these um, wild trees in the jungles. So, wandering around. Yeah, just wandering around. So just... Got your machete and off yeah, for the day. Machetes. I didn't have any GPS. Oh, really? <laughs> I just, my GPS and my memories. Really? So yeah. you would just, and you were sort of cutting trails? Yeah, you cutting trails and yeah. trying to like, you know. I, I, I found like about almost like 300 trees, wild trees here. It's all over the place. All phenotypes. We have purple orange. We have um, green to yellow. We have um, green to green. Then we have um, multiple colors. Those are the four types of trees they've identified, all named for the colors of their pods as they ripen. All four are members of the same shade-loving variety, which Jacob hoped could be the engine of his rainforest revival scheme. If, of course, it produced delicious chocolate. So it was like, well, shit, man, let's make some chocolate. Because if nothing else, we could eat chocolate here. Like, chocolate, yeah, why not? Just as like a hobby. As we tore the preserve, Jacob and Elmer offered to snag a couple of pods for me to show me their special qualities. But the pods are 20 feet up. Uh, like, oh, I see yeah. like one, two, three, four, five. It has like five pods, like almost ready to harvest, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this is what we do, we harvest these. So bring a long bush stick, we cut a cahoon leaf. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Like, like this. Cahoons are crazy palms. Their fronds can be 30 feet long, shooting up from the ground in these graceful arcs. Walking through a cahoon grove, you expect to come upon a brontosaurus munching on them. The immense fronds are the go-to choice for roofing, and the sharpened central ribs make awesome jousting lances for cutting cacao pods out of trees. So you can get a catch here. Anything you like. Oh, I see. So you just scrape it, scrape up the trunk and... Yeah. Got it. And there it is in my hand. 
cacao with some very unusual qualities. The multicolor and the purple orange had close to like almost 60% cocoa butter. That's super high. That's super high. Rich, creamy chocolate. Yep. Some people say it tastes like almost like milk chocolate. It's a light right. brownish red. It's not bitter. Right. Zero bitterness. Zero. Just, there's yeah. nothing bitter about it. And it doesn't even taste that much like chocolate. What you think of as chocolate. It's like, you know? At first, Jacob's chocolate making skills were limited, but he kept dialing it in. And so, like, every year, about this time, we'd go out there with backpacks, and, and, and then I'd bring up to the station, I'd make chocolate with them, and I'd experiment, I'm learning, I'm trying to figure things out. And people would come through here and say, God, that Criollo, I can't believe it, that, that stuff's probably really special. That word, Criollo, is a famous and sacred term in the world of chocolate. But Jacob was only just discovering the treasure he had on his hands. I'm learning about Creole. I don't really know much about what that meant, but it's like, okay, so it's it's a relic cacao. It's not grown much. Creole was the original cacao of the ancient Maya, the variety they cultivated all over their empire and introduced to the Spanish in the 1500s. The smooth, creamy flavor of Creole made chocolate a worldwide obsession. It was the only chocolate anyone knew until the 1700s, when it began to get wiped out by disease. Soon it was replaced by hardier, more productive hybrid varieties. Varieties that didn't taste as good, but were easier to grow. And those varieties took over the world. For decades, craft chocolate makers have been scouring Central America for sources of Criollo. The best they can usually find are hybrids that have a percentage of Criollo genes and a trace of that original Criollo smoothness. Pure Criollo? You never see it. But Jacob began wondering about his 300 trees. If there was anywhere some old Criollo strains could have escaped hybridization, it was in the middle of one of the most inaccessible rainforests in the world. It's the least explored, least disturbed, most unspoiled place. Everything up there, it just feels like this stuff has always been here. Just old. So he embarked on a new quest. Find someone who could tell him just how special this stuff was and find out if anyone cared. Want a taste of some of this God-level chocolate? We got you covered. Kaleidoscope has joined forces with Louise Abram and Stetler Chocolate to make a special box to go along with this very podcast. Taste what has driven many to near madness at www.stetler-chocolate.com. When you're in the market for a new car, you want a vehicle that conquers your daily commute, easily handles the elements, and looks great too. You need the reliability of a Toyota and the confidence that your investment will last. Why? Because after all the carpools, shopping trips, and weekends out, you want a car that still has plenty of miles left in it and holds its value for a great trade-in deal. That's where Toyota leads the pack, as the number one resale value brand for 2024, according to Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com. So check out the all-new, fully redesigned 25 Camry, or test drive a stylish and affordable Corolla sedan or hatchback. And remember, when you choose Toyota, you're not just buying a car for today, you're investing in trade-in value for tomorrow. Visit buyatoyota.com, the official website for deals, for more. Vehicles projected resale value is specific to the 2024 model year. For more information, visit Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com. Kelly Blue Book is a registered trademark of Kelly Blue Book Co. Inc. Toyota, let's go places. Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for up to half the cost. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Savings based on cost of Consumer Cellular's single line 1, 5, and 10 gig data plans with unlimited talk and text compared to lowest cost single line postpaid unlimited talk text and data plans offered by T-Mobile and Verizon January 2024. Are you tired of your scented cleaning products smelling and cleaning like meh? Then it's time for an upgrade with the power of Clorox Sentiva. With an uplifting scent that smells like coconut, Clorox Sentiva gives you powerful clean like Clorox, but a feeling like <sighs> being transported to a tropical island retreat. Imagine putting your phone on Do Not Disturb, tuning out all the constant, just the feeling of warm sand in between your toes and a fruity drink in your hand. 
the ones with the little umbrella. Refresh your home to feel like an all-inclusive vacation by getting Clorox Sentiva. Also available in grapefruit and lavender scents at a nearby retail store. What I always remember is the smell, just the smell of my yaya's kitchen during the summer. Remember Matt Caputo, the Salt Lake Deli guy who became America's heirloom chocolate champion? Matt credits his Greek grandmother for his passion for rare ingredients and unusual flavors. She had a tiny little plot in Salt Lake City. She grew her own potatoes, dandelion greens. You know, her produce didn't taste like the produce you could buy in the grocery store. So I became accustomed to looking for flavors that don't really exist in, you know, what has become a pretty monoculture food system. Taste and smell are some of the first and most important ways that we make meaning of the world around us. They're the raw material of experience, the scaffolding upon which we hang our memories. They're the way each generation passes its passions to the next. No matter where you're from in the world, we have beautiful traditions, delicious foods, incredibly rich ingredients that are disappearing at an alarming rate. Over the years, Matt had built Caputo's into a show house for these cultural touchstones. But he'd also watched in dismay as those flavors disappeared. It was harder and harder to get, you know, a raw milk Pecorino Romano. And I would see this trajectory in every category, not just cheese, of things getting more and more homogenized, more and more flavorless. As he watched industrial agriculture set fire to the world's libraries of flavor, Matt became convinced that he had to be a kind of librarian, preserving as many of the great flavor manuscripts as he could. And cacao seemed like a special case, with some of the most endangered masterpieces of all. He wanted to help. Then he heard about a new initiative that captured his imagination, the Heirloom Cacao Preservation Fund. The goal of the project was to identify the world's great cacaos with an expert tasting panel and to prove their uniqueness through genetic testing. That certification would be the stamp of approval, drawing the attention of bean to bar chocolate makers. The first designee was an easy call, Volker Lehman and his Tranquilidad beans. Soon other designees were added, including Emily Stone's Maya Mountain Cacao. In 2016, Jacob submitted the Bee Free Beans, hoping they had enough Criollo parentage to be something special. And soon enough, he heard back from the committee. Congratulations, your beans have made the cut. I heard that from one of their board members, oh, we're going to be announcing this year pure Criollo <laughs> at, in San Francisco at this big chocolate event. And I was like, you are? <laughs> you mean, that sounds, I'm coming. <laughs> Thanks for not inviting me. But I'm like, I'm fucking going to San Francisco, goddammit. So he attends the award ceremony. The audience is 250 well-dressed people in the world of chocolate. And the MC is Ed Seguin, a legend in the fine chocolate industry. And to Jacob's amazement, Ed is getting all worked up over Jacob's beans. And he's talking about pure Criollo. It's the only pure cacao known in the world. The tasting panel has never tasted anything quite this heirloom before. Pure Criollo parentage, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? What does that even mean? And, and then he's done. And I was like, wait a minute. So I stand up <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm the guy that submitted those beans. You're not going to invite me up? <laughs> Jacob was just looking for a little love, but he got a lot. After the ceremony, he was swarmed by chocolate makers. Could they get some samples of those beans? How about a few tons? Did he need a business partner? He soon found out why. The expert tasting panel had tasted Jacob's submission and found it to be a paragon of smooth and silky chocolate. Then the geneticists at the USDA did their thing and came away in shock. These beans weren't high in Criollo content, they were 100% Criollo. In other words, this was the original cacao of the Maya, a direct line back to the one that existed before Europeans ever got involved. Somehow, it had holed up in the Maya mountains for a thousand years, and now it was ready for re-entry. The panel's declaration gave Jacob all the incentive he needed to try to make that delicious, shade-loving cacao a flagship of rainforest restoration. And those original 300 trees became sacred to him. 
we don't, we don't touch these trees, man. We, yeah. don't, we don't do anything. All we do is harvest pods, collect data, and collect budwood. That budwood? Super important. Budwood is the newly formed tips of branches that are used to grow an exact duplicate of the mother tree. When Jacob returned from his trip to the States, he set to work planting. We have almost 10,000 trees of this material now growing. 10,000 trees, 10,000 baby criollos, a forest of ancient Mayan cacao rising up in the Belize wilds. And they are just the beginning. If Jacob has his way, those 10,000 trees will give birth to a million more. Not just to be free, but anywhere anyone wants to grow new rainforest and figure out a way to pay for it. As a bonus, we'll all get to experience this ghost of chocolate past. Jacob also became the volunteer president of the Heirloom Cacao Preservation Fund, which has now designated 16 of the world's cacaos as essential cultural heritage. That's helped bring recognition and a decent income to the farmers who are keeping these masterpieces alive. But it isn't always enough. Ironically, it couldn't save the very first designee, Volker Lehmann. After years of dodging bullet after bullet in the jungle, he was about to take one right in the heart. Everything went just uh, upside down. You know, from one moment to the other. Uh, I thought I was doing the good things and all of a sudden I was in uh, turmoil. You know, uh, the sky was falling on my head. in the market for a new car you want a vehicle that conquers your daily commute easily handles the elements and looks great too you need the reliability of a toyota and the confidence that your investment will last why because after all the carpools shopping trips and weekends out you want a car that still has plenty of miles left in it and holds its value for a great trade-in deal that's where toyota leads the pack as the number one resale value brand for 2024 according to kelly blue books kbb.com So check out the all-new, fully redesigned 25 Camry. Or test drive a stylish and affordable Corolla sedan or hatchback. And remember, when you choose Toyota, you're not just buying a car for today. You're investing in trade-in value for tomorrow. Visit buyatoyota.com, the official website for deals, for more. Vehicles projected resale value is specific to the 2024 model year. For more information, visit Kelly Blue Book's kbb.com. Kelly Blue Book is a registered trademark of Kelly Blue Book Co. Inc. Toyota, let's go places. Are you tired of your scented cleaning products smelling and cleaning like meh? Then it's time for an upgrade with the power of Clorox Sentiva. With an uplifting scent that smells like coconut, Clorox Sentiva gives you powerful clean like Clorox, but a feeling like <sighs> being transported to a tropical island retreat. Imagine putting your phone on Do Not Disturb, tuning out all the constant just the feeling of warm sand in between your toes and a fruity drink in your hand. The ones with the little umbrella. Refresh your home to feel like an all-inclusive vacation by getting Clorox Sentiva. Also available in grapefruit and lavender scents at a nearby retail store. Boston Proper is for women who love distinctive style in styles that don't define them. Boston Proper designs are unique and made to fit flawlessly. Confident women wear Boston Proper as an expression of who they are. With chic, polished styling and unforgettable looks that get noticed anytime, every day, and on any occasion. When you want that certain something in everything you wear, wear Boston Proper. Shop at bostonproper.com and wear it like no one else. One thing I noticed right away when I came back to Bolivia in 2022 was that whatever romance the jungle had once held for Volker, it was long gone. Seems like that the birds in in the in the jungle in the Amazon in, in the tropical here they don't know how to sing. Seems like uh, they never went to a singing school. <laughs> And, and most and most of it is is like more like shouting noise uh, like this. And there's one 
I maybe we hear we hear. It's like a like a, a dying sound. <laughs> it's it's like somebody is strangling the bird while he tries to to sing. <laughs> like <laughs> that sounded like a different guy from the one I'd left on top of the world after our visit to the Yero Carré. They'd agreed to provide 15 tons of cacao, which meant he'd be delivering 45 tons to Felschlin, three shipping containers. But he needed serious capital. He needed to build a fermentation center in the jungle. He needed boats, and he had to hire people to do the buying and transporting for him. Most of all, he needed cash to pay all the harvesters. So he took on investors. It was a huge gamble. But the first year, it worked great. He produced more cacao than ever. The quality was awesome. Felschlin was thrilled, and he made his payments. It worked the next year, too. He felt like the system he'd always envisioned in his mind was finally up and running. But in 2014, three years into his business, the rains came even harder than usual. The Mamare flooded badly. I was in, in very good terms with the people, so I trusted them. And I asked them, uh, will there be cacao? Yeah, yeah, there will be a lot of cacao, you know. But give us uh, so much and we pay you, don't worry. So he flushed 50,000 into the jungle, expecting to get twice that much in cacao out of it. But weeks later, the harvest trickled in. Just 20,000 worth of cacao. Volker was understanding. Despite the knot in his stomach, he said, fine, whatever. Things get weird in the jungle. Just give me back the rest of the money. And his buyer said, well, here's the thing. We gave the money to the pickers, and they spent it all. Sorry. 30 grand just evaporated into the bush. What was he going to do? Bring a legal case against the whole forest? He decided to eat the losses himself. He liked the guys, and they'd had a good track record until then. I said, that's not a problem, okay? You owe me. So For the next year? Yeah, next year. And so we, we leveled this out. Uh, it's not such a... A uh, great deal. In other words, no worries. Consider it an advance on next year's cacao. He'd come so close, and he just really didn't want to see this one go down the tubes. He was now fully emotionally invested. But then it was time to talk to his lenders and explain that he couldn't make his payment this year. And they were not emotionally invested. I said, okay, this year I present a loss. And they said, uh, what is a loss? <laughs> Um, please explain, you know. I said, yeah, loss is when you don't have earnings. You know, you, you're you on the negative. Yeah, negative is no good. Uh, yeah, okay, we sue you. you have to give, yeah, you have to give us the money back. I said, the money is with the people in the jungle. I explain it again to you if you want. I'm, I'm happy to explain it again. So I gave the money, the harvest was low, so now we have to recover the loss. Oh, loss, no, 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 no. You have to give us the money back. I said, I have no money. Oh yeah, then we seize your assets. Oh, okay. I ended up in a lawsuit. Total fucking disaster. Leans on his house and on his business. He had to declare bankruptcy and his marriage crumbled. Later, as we were driving around Bolivia, looking for cacao to buy. Volker confessed just how devastating it all was to his life and his psyche. I mean, it seems like it must have been hard just personally to walk, like, when you just gotten all that recognition, you knew you were making one of the best chocolates yeah. in the world. Yeah. It took me, um, you know, from, basically from t 2014 to until last year, uh, actually to recover. Um, Financially or personally? Spiritually? Entirely, yeah. yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything a, a little bit. Because everything is interlinked, in, you know. And, and I wanted to save uh, Tranquilidad, and I wanted to save at least, you know, this part. Yes, his creditors were coming for his beloved cacao forest, too. Man, you must have been furious at a lot of people. Uh, I had a little, 
it was a section of rage, you know, pure rage. I, I would, you know, with a gun in my hand, I would have killed some people, maybe. Fortunately, he didn't. In fact, at the moment of maximum rage, when he thought he might explode, he just let it all go. The lawsuits, the frustration, the fury, gone. The guys who just lost all his money in the jungle, he knew they were hard up. So he said, why don't you just live in my house in Trinidad for free until you get back on your feet? Ever since I'm calm, I'm much calmer than before. Much, much. Oh, I'm, I, oh, Buddha is, is nothing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more calm than the river uh, Sitato was sitting at. Have you ever been in touch with those guys? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I saw, yeah, yeah. Uh, Once in a while I remind them to pay me and then they laugh and say, yeah, yeah, we do. Okay. Is that just kind of how things work here? Yeah. Yeah, just forget about it and go on. It's like a bad divorce, (laughs) you know. You cannot suffer forever, you know. You you have to go on with your life. And he did. In fact, he pulled a full Siddhartha. He just decided to walk away. From Tranquilidad, from Bolivia, from cacao, from everything. A new start. But he did need to make good on his debts. So he took a job as a consultant with Conservation International in Costa Rica, living like a hermit, saving every penny. And with that, it seemed like the dream of wild cacao had died. Perhaps it was just too hard, too remote, too iffy. A successful cacao business requires predictability, and the Amazon eats predictability for breakfast. But unbeknownst to Volker, even as he struggled to put cacao out of his mind for good, the seeds were taking hold on new ground, and the next crop of cacao hunters was about to blossom. In 2014, the same year he was walking away from the Amazon, Louisa Abram was plunging in. Year by year, just coming, and just showing them that I was not gonna be defeated, that like I I was going to persist. And she wasn't going to let European chocolate makers or loan sharks tell her how to operate. She was going to do it all on her own terms. A New Hope, next week, on Obsessions, Wild Chocolate. Wild Chocolate is a Kaleidoscope production with iHeart Podcasts. Hosted and reported by me, Rowan Jacobson, and produced by Shane McKeon at Nice Marmot Media. Edited by Kate Osborne and Mangesh Hadakudor. Sound design and mixing by Soundboard. Original music composition by Spencer Stevenson, a.k.a. Botany. Production help from Bahini Shori. From iHeart, our executive producers are Katrina Norvell and Nikki Etor. Special thanks to Laura Mayer, Kostas Linos, Oz Wallachan, Aaron Kaufman, Will Pearson, Conal Byrne, Bob Pittman, Daria Daniel, and the team at Stetler, who are helping us make a very special chocolate of our own. That's right. We're working with Louisa and others to protect the rainforest and make delicious Amazonian chocolate. Visit www.stetler-chocolate.com to taste it for yourself. That's www.stetler-chocolate.com. And if you want to hear more of this type of content, nothing is more important to the creators here at Kaleidoscope then subscribers, ratings, and reviews. Please spread the love wherever you listen. Boston Proper is for women who love distinctive style in styles that don't define them. Boston Proper designs are unique and made to fit flawlessly. Confident women wear Boston Proper as an expression of who they are with chic, polished styling and unforgettable looks that get noticed anytime, every day, and on any occasion. When you want that certain something in everything you wear, wear Boston Proper. Shop at bostonproper.com and wear it like no one else. Hey, have you ever used Cheapo Air? For years, and I really like it. With Cheapo Air, you can book online, use their app, or even over the phone. They've got great prices on over 500 airlines and millions of accommodations. They're my go-to for travel planning. And if you join their Club Miles program, you can earn points to save on the cost of your travel. 
book on the app and you get double points. Sounds like it's time I tried Cheapo Air. Call Cheapo Air at 855-247-3279 or visit CheapoAir.com slash podcast. You know that feeling when you walk into your home, take a deep breath, and feel new? Well, that's what it's like to use Clorox Sentiva. Because Clorox Sentiva smells like coconut, cleans like Clorox, and feels like energy. It'll elevate any cleaning routine to not just clean, but also make every room smell like a tropical coconut getaway. Discover how Clorox Sentiva's powerful clean and refreshing scents can transform your space. Get yours in coconut or other fabulous scents at a nearby retail store.